And we are live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the third collective revenue marketing automation session that we are co-hosting with our friends at UserGuest. You're most likely expecting to see Leah here today, but unfortunately, she's struck down with the flu at the moment, so consequently is resting, and hopefully, Leah, you'll feel better very soon. Um, but uh, I'll be filling in for her today, so uh, I'm sure we'll have a great session. And we have a great lineup of guests today as well. But first, before we come to our guests, let me introduce our co-host for today's session, which is Mr. Eric Munoz, who is the Chief Revenue Officer at UserGuest. Eric, how are you, Hello, sir? Andre. It's great to see you. Good, thank you, Andre. Nice to be here. How are you? A little chilly this morning. It's uh, minus six here this morning. So, yeah, it's a little chilly. How about yourself? Yeah, a little bit colder, actually, minus 11. Oh, UK. wow. Well, there you go. You win. Very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. So um, I'd like to bring in now perhaps our guests. And the first one I'll bring in is Daniela Hupfeld. Daniela is the commercial director at Pierre and Vacances. Daniela, lovely yeah. to see you again. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Very well indeed, and I can't compete with the minus temperatures. I'm having around twenty. So yes, well, thank you for that. That's lovely to hear. You're I'm very glad welcome. you're nice and warm down in Spain. That's wonderful. Very good. Okay, and our second guest joining us is another Daniela, Daniela Buchen from Ruby Hotels, and Daniela is sitting also in a lovely, warm climate in Malta. Daniela, how are you today? Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Andre. I'm doing very well, and I guess I win with the temperature. It's 22 degrees here, and going to 24 tomorrow, so it's uh, nice and sunny here. Very nice. good. You do. I think, I think Eric, we're yeah. going to have to do something about that. I think we have to head south. <laughs> switch switch places, yeah. 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 Okay. Depends very if you good. want a white Christmas or not, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't have to have a white Christmas. You know, I grew up in Australia, so we're very much used to warm Christmases. Yeah, on the beach. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, so let's get straight into it. So, you know, over the last, this is the third session. Over the last two sessions, we touched on how revenue marketing automation helps bridge the gap between two key departments within the hotels, bringing revenue and marketing closer together on a practical and an implementation level. Uh, the role of automation within revenue marketing uh, and how hotels can automatically boost their revenues and optimize inventory by embracing the hotel tech tools that are available today. And today we're going to look into the revenue part of revenue marketing automation and explore how revenue strategies can be applied directly to the hotel's website and what the benefits are of this. So, Eric, before we get into the details or the minutiae of this session, perhaps it might also help if you give us a little bit of an overview of what it means to bridge the gap between revenue management and marketing. And again, the definition of RMA, just for those that might be just tuning in with us now. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Andre. I think the easiest way to explain it is um, put it in practical terms. When the guest visits the hotel website, they have no idea whether you're full, you're half full or the, any dates in the future, what the demand conditions might be. They, they don't know at all. So uh, if you're a revenue manager, you, you have that information already. You know exactly what your price strategy will be for all different days in the future, whether you're using an RMS system or whether you're doing this manually. You, you have that information. So RMA is a way to bridge that communication gap. Make sure that the guests who visit your website are aware of any incentives, any special benefits that um, is attributed to them because of their booking behavior. So we'll go back, go into that in more very simply. It's opening up the opportunity for the website to be a lot more dynamic with its content and relevant to the guest because all guests have different patterns of booking behavior. And when technology is used with, with that information at hand, it makes it much easier then to say to the guest, what particular dates or what particular benefits are available to them based on their particular booking behavior, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so today we're also going to be covering, I guess, kind of three main areas. First of all is applying revenue strategies to the hotel website and the importance of creating visibility of those strategies on the direct channel. And um, also how can revenue strategies be applied directly to the hotel website and what are the practicalities and the benefits of doing so. Um, but I think before we, we, we start with the questions and what I think a, a good place to start actually is uh, maybe uh, Daniela from Ruby can, can start with this as well. How do hotels 
best get their future guests actually onto the website and then encourage the direct booking process. Yeah, um, I guess that's that's all it starts with, right? Uh, getting getting your guests on the website and not on on another website on on booking.com or something like that. So there's there's different um, options. Uh, I think visibility is very very important in this case, and um, making sure that as soon as you're starting um, with uh, in a search engine, for instance, that your search engine is uh, well optimized but also in terms of marketing that you um, uh, have have search engine mar marketing in place. There's there's more advertising possibilities with Metas, with Google Hotel ads, et cetera. Um, here, it's also very important that something we're working on uh, currently that um, we exclude um, uh, third parties like OTAs to, to bid on our own brands. For instance, uh, because why would, would an LTA get the right to bid on Ruby hotels, for instance? Um, but that's that's another discussion, which is a little bit uh, tricky. Um, but I guess that's where it starts. Uh, what is very important also is uh, that you uh, offer rate parity, that you really show your guests, hey, our own website is really the cheapest that you get. It's not... Um, it's not more expensive. You don't have higher uh, cancellation policies or something like that, that you really right from the start trick your guests or not trick your guests, but really attract your guests with the right benefits to uh, that it's clear why you should book on the brand.com website. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Daniela Hupfeld, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, yes and no, I would say. I fully agree, of course. Um, COE sounds absolutely easy. In practice, I find, as working in Spain, which is traditionally a country that lives a lot from tour operators and, and incoming agencies and things like that, and traditionally also a lot with net rates um, that then are obviously not always used in the sense that you wanted them to be used. So having rate parity or being able to offer an even better rate on your own website sometimes turns out to be really tricky in that, let's say, fuzzy world of distribution that we have today. It used to be a lot easier. And it's important that contracts are very clear that, as Daniela said, that you forbid the brand bidding first um, and that you also try to yeah, to avoid that partners use your rates, not in the way you intended them to be used. And we're finding that partly really tricky. Okay. Um, Eric, another question, perhaps just also from your, from your perspective. I mean, you've seen this for, for, not, for a number of years over your career. And, you know, we've also noticed that m mostly hotels don't seem to really apply revenue strategies to their websites. And before I put this to, to both Daniela's, I'd like to get your perspective, perspective on this as well, because you've obviously had experience operationally as well as on, on this side. So why is that? You know, why do you feel that hotels are not able to apply revenue strategies to their websites? Um, before we maybe get dive, dive, dive deeper into that, I think we need to kind of cover the why. Yeah, I think it's a combination of technology fragmentation and also individual user role fragmentation. So if we look at the hotel website uh, in terms of the hotel um, components that are, that are contributing towards what's, what information is visible on the hotel website, you have a booking engine. And that booking engine is almost always going to convert uh, connect to the PMS and possibly the RMS as well. So if those two, if those pieces are not uh, integrated in a proper way to present data or read data on the website, then it's, you have a very limited opportunity. Uh, and so the, the R, sorry, the, the A in RMA, the automation piece is, is critical there that the, the technology can be uh, easily applied. But the other part is the fragmentation of the individual user roles. If we look at the website being the, the responsibility for the marketing team and then the pricing strategy, responsibility of the revenue team, if those two um, teams aren't working together in terms of being able to communicate what is the best op option for the guests as they visit the website, then it doesn't matter whether you have the technology integrated or not. If the conversation is not actually occurring where the different uh, marketing and revenue teams are looking to see how they can optimize every single visit for every single guest, then again, it, 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 there's, a, there's a limited opportunity there if those conversations aren't happening. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Daniela from Ruby, would you like to add anything as well? Is there, from your personal experience, is, would you agree with everything Eric has said? Or would you think yeah, definitely. It's, it starts, of course, with techno, uh, technological um, possibilities. And um, it's just the fact that many ODAs have uh, very easy uh, possibilities. Uh, if we're talking about booking.com to just create a deal or, or push ranking or things like that, um, which are very easy to, to handle with a couple of clicks and therefore um, quicker used sometimes than on, on, on websites. Also, revenue managers don't always have the, the really the, the influence on what, what is possible on their own website because that's where a brand is behind. Mm -hmm. This is uh, something that we're working on with Ruby that we're really always trying to, to offer the, the best option really on our own website, not on, on third party websites. Um, so, so that's very important. Um, but therefore, of course, you need to have the technical possibilities there. Um, however, I guess that, that most brands at the moment or most hotels at the moment have a revenue management system, which is integrated to the booking engine or at least throughout the PMS to the booking engine so that there's really revenue management strategies applied on the booking engine itself, um, which is definitely a key uh, or a, a must have, I guess. Um, though, but I think additional to technological possibilities also also very important is that you know your guests. What does your guest want? And only if you really know your guests, you can anticipate and you can really sell that what the guest is looking for. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and Daniela, Hupfeld, um, in your opinion, what are the main reasons that hotels should consider applying revenue strategies to their direct channel? Can you perhaps maybe touch on some of the benefits from that yeah where do you start i mean the own website is your it's your brand it's like your brochure as we used to say in the old days and it's also when you even if you take all the costs together it's still one of your cheaper distribution channels when it comes to cost so that is something and it's the yeah, it's 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 you, it's your identity. So from that perspective, from a marketing perspective, I think that's why the brand is the most important thing to be looked after. Having said that, you need to obviously have a brand name that that justifies that or that allows you to do that and to build it up gradually. And also what Daniela said, the knowing your guests, if you don't know who is in or if you don't target the customers that you design your brand for in the proper way, then it gets really, really difficult. Then you become just one among many and you become a, like a casualty, if you like. And then uh, you end up with much more third-party bookings than direct bookings. So it, it starts before all these connection things. Obviously, you need to have a technology behind it that makes that work. And also, I think the what Eric said, the communication between the two departments is really important. But that's, I think, in Daniela's case and also in my case, we both run both departments. So I think that's the first step in the right direction to make sure it's coming all out of the same um, point, if you like, and then take it from there. But I think the, the knowing your guests, I uh, think many hotels and hotel chains still today, and we are certainly no exception, um, we're lacking a lot behind when it comes to, to CRM and knowing your guests and target your guests. There's a lot of money spent um, without having a proper target, and then you're getting just by coincidence the right bookings, but not really by strategy. Okay. Great, thank you. So Eric, question for you then, in terms of everything that we've just heard based on those three separate answers from the questions is where does RMA, in your opinion, step into this equation, acting as the facilitator, bringing, bringing those two together? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think um, Daniela Boken mentioned it already in terms of where, where does the traffic come from? Like the, the, the traffic will be coming from known destinations. So using analytics, we know whether it was a Google search or whether the guest actually visited the website from the Instagram account or Facebook account. Um, so knowing the source of the traffic is a one level of personalization. And so you can, you can already do personalized messages for guests. For example, if they visit you from your Instagram page, you can, uh, you can have an automated response to say, we love our Instagram followers. 
free welcome drink about a on arrival or whatever the benefit might be. And no one will see that message at all on the website unless they actually did visit your website from your, your Instagram account. So I think no, knowing the ability to personalize messages is a big, is a big part of how um, RMA um, serves its, its technology, um, so how it serves technology. Let's say, for example, we, we, um, we had a guest that's actually visiting the OTA rather than the hotel website. You can be sure the OTAs are doing all types of um, conversion strategies, to try and keep the, the guest booking there or create urgency in that situation. So uh, what, we're, what we're talking about in an RMA is what the OTAs are doing already on their website for many, many years now. So it's automating a inf piece of information that's relevant to the guest, depending, depending where the guest comes from, or depending on their, their booking behavior. And when I say booking behavior, we not only do we know where the guest has visited from, so they, they came from Instagram, for example, but we also know um, their, their IP, their, their geographic origin. So we have a hotel, for example, let's say a hotel in Malta, and you have somebody visiting the website who's also from Malta, but you also have somebody visiting the website from Australia. Two different visitors who are visiting the same website, but without RMA, that, that, that's a static static piece of information. They, they would see exactly the same um, website information unless they then click into the booking button to go into make, make a reservation, and then they start to see prices, packages, benefits, etc. So if we take that step back, the idea with RMA is to actually make sure people are not just visiting the website, but they're making a booking. And so all those messages, all those types of notifications about benefits are all designed to show personalization um, strategies to get the guests to actually make a booking. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Dan Daniela Birken, is that something that, that you see is, is absolutely uh, imperative today that hotels should really be applying? From your, yes, from your perspective? definitely. I think personalization is really key. And this is something that the hospitality needs to take to the next level. Um, if we compare ourselves with, for instance, Netflix does that very good already. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but uh, my husband, for instance, watches very, very different movies and series as me, like more into Marvel and action, et cetera. Um, Still, on both our accounts, we do get the exact same movies recommended. I get a movie recommended with some romantic snapshot from whatever scene, and he gets uh, the same movie recommended with a, a snapshot from, from an action scene or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's still, still the same product behind it, but it's a different marketing strategy uh, to, to capture the right the right person and everyone is just looking for something else and, and that's what we really need to develop um the hospitality into as well mm -hmm. i think we're getting there though for sure especially with solutions like you know user guests that, that eric is, mm -hmm. is representing today i think that's definitely possible Dan daniela hupfeld from I, I guess coming back to revenue strategies um it might be a simple question but uh, I'd like to get, a, 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 I guess, a yes or a no. Is it possible to even implement revenue strategies today directly on the hotel website? Simple, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, Okay, absolutely. so what, what, what kind of strategies then could or even should be applied? Can you give us a couple of examples that a hotel could perhaps easily apply to its website today? Yeah, easily is always relative, but... Um, let's say when you're looking at your tactical stuff you obviously do um, with your real yield restrictions you obviously apply things automatically either from the rms as daniela said or pms crs through the booking engine but when you then come back to the things that eric mentioned that you really target um your visitors differently and combine that with the needs of the hotels. Let's say you have hotels where you have big F&B outlets. Yeah? So it's very important that you don't get only the accommodation customers, but you also get the people that go for dinner or, you know, that that, that using all the F&B facilities, the, the clubs and things like that. So that needs to be communicated because not everybody knows it's there. Not everybody clicks themselves to the gallery and looks at 150 photos or something like that. It needs to be 
there and like like depending on which, from which affiliated partners you might come eric mentioned instagram for example if people are interested in like food sites or restaurant sites things like that and then you point out exactly those facilities that could interest that customer i think that's very important what is the hotel's needs what kind of customer do you need in your property and every property obviously being a bit different and that needs to be um, transferred to your website so that by the end of the day the hotel ends up with the right guest if that makes any sense mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh eric coming coming back to to yourself then in terms of um how hotels know which strategies to apply when what, what are your thoughts around that how can best how can hotels best kind of manage that yeah i think it's important for the hotels to realize that this is not going to be taking up too much time you you set up your strategy and then um, no one's asking the website to apply any, any further discounts than what you're already offering. There's nothing that's being dynamically discounted. It's really just, let's say, um, opening the curtains on the website to what's actually possible. So if we look at a, a guest who's visiting your website, as I mentioned before, they don't know whether you're empty or full or something in between. between. But, but the system does know what they're likely booking behavior is are they going to be booking the next seven to ten days or are they booking the next five to six weeks and so um but the hotelier has already created their revenue strategy around high occupancy periods or low occupancy periods that's just a um a setting which is done at implementation stage um, and then automatically as your occupancy goes up and down the system will automatically um, provide the notification to the guest that matches their booking behavior but also matches the hotel's interest. The hotel have an objective to um, maximize their direct bookings, but also not, not, not just maximize bookings, but actually get the guests from the website into the booking engine with, with uh, relevant and personalized notifications. So if the system recognizes that I'm traveling, or so I'm visiting the website from a, a certain geography and understands that that booking window that, that matches my geography also matches dates where the hotel is actually heavily booked that should that that notification should trigger uh, a simple message to say high occupancy here um, these are the dates we we recommend for you and just be more a lot more interactive with the guest than simply just saying um you know we have, we have high occupancy we to actually give the guest specific dates where their bookings are better uh, better made uh, is a i think a huge benefit mm -hmm. in terms of how, how to apply it Okay. Are there any other benefits that you can think of when it comes to existing revenue strategies that hotels can apply to their website via, for example, RMA? Yeah. Um, a very simple one um, is to apply specific dates. So if you have, a, let's say, a group cancellation, uh, the, the 10th of January, five nights, the group has cancelled. Um, the guest doesn't know that. The guest doesn't know that you're trying to scramble to fill up rooms where you previously had them booked. So to enter in those specific dates is a simple way to let the system start influencing more bookings on those dates where you really need them. Or if you're a property that has uh, a weekly booking pattern where Sunday nights and Monday nights are usually the most quiet nights of the week and the rest of the, the days of the week are more heavily booked, that's another setting that's very simply applied where, where the, the guest uh, they, they may, not, may not be aware that Sunday nights or Monday nights tend to be quieter. So if the if notification is highlighting that to the guest, they, they can be pleasantly surprised to say, oh, okay, actually these particular days, um, the rates are 15% lower than normal, but they already have a feeling that, okay, I, I did the right thing by coming to the website. Um, you can complement those messages by putting in a price comparison as well, um, as Daniela was talking about before, to, to reconfirm to the guests that they're in the right place. They're not paying more. The best, the best prices are on the brand.com website. So um, days of the week, specific dates for price comparisons are an easy way just to reinforce to the guests they're in the right place um, and they should just continue on to make the booking directly. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Daniela, I've a question for you now, then, is if revenue strategies are, are already in place within your revenue management system per se, does that mean that you're seeing yourself recreating all of those strategies again for the website? 
like repeating the process again, or is that something within the text that is is uh, catered for? I don't think you would recreate it necessarily, but when you start out, like let's call it an editorial planning or whatever you do, you you lay it out to start with, right? So you you're setting it up, let's say in one go, if you like. I don't see a double work in there because yeah you you know what you're doing you know what you're targeting so and you're doing that across channels no i mean and therefore what you apply to your brand website is what is applied let's say if someone calls the hotel or if that still happens i don't know but um and i don't see any disadvantage in having to create additional manual efforts to to apply that as eric already pointed out it's not something that is related to heavy work it can be set up in a very easy way and it can be amended easily as well so therefore i would not say that that is any any double work uh, included there at all okay um eric just coming back to you then in terms of complementing other solutions within a hotel tech stack how how does your product user guess how does that actually effectively do that yeah, so it's using existing technologies like PMS. So most PMS systems have um, scheduled reports, for example. So a scheduled report with hotel availability is the most um, simplest way for the system to get access to hotels availability. So um, no APIs are required, no um, complicated integrations are required. It's literally um, an availability report from the PMS is one particular option. Or if the hotel's using a, an RMS like Duetto, for example, those sort of outputs or a rate shopper like HQ Revenue, for example, hotels are using multiple tools like obviously PMS, but also RMSs and rate shopping systems, um, as well as booking engines. So all of those systems work with availability and, and many, many of those systems like the PMS in particular, and also the, the rate shopping systems, they have the ability to, to send that information in a report format, which which user guests can then transpose that into actual data. So the, the system knows when occupancy is going up or down and what your demand actually is on a case-by-case -case basis. So the hotelier is not having to log into the system every single day to, to monitor changes and monitor um, the, the data data inputs. So um, fortunately, with the, the technology is flexible enough that we can work with scheduled reports rather than having to have uh, a complicated integration. Okay, great. Um, and Daniela Buchen, coming back to you in terms of um, upselling, how is it best to upsell effectively during peak periods via uh, yourbrand.com? Um, I guess that's again starting to, to know what do your guests really want? Um, what is it that they're looking for? Uh, are there specific features that they want? So you you post really these features within the in the booking platform. Um, upselling there there are different uh, possibilities. Of course, a very uh, well known possibility is also uh, getting the booking first and then mm -hmm. after the booking is created to sell a pre uh, to send a pre arrival letter, for instance, or still. Uh, through throughout the check-in uh, period where you you um, still offer this upsell where there's a higher room category or an added benefit still possible for for a little bit um, better rate um what's the mo uh, main main topic here is that you really uh, highlight what the benefit for the guest is in this case and why a guest should should buy this i guess Okay. Is there is there a way that is there is it during peak periods per se? Do you do you approach this in a different way, or is it effectively the same depending on the? Um, really, I think the upselling is upselling is is um, it really de depends on on your availability and on your booking uh, period. I don't think it really depends on peak dates or, or low season dates. Um, of course, with, with peak dates, you, you want to make as much revenue and, and, uh, and high ADR as possible. 
but um, there you'll also increase your lowest room category ADR as well. Um, so in terms of that, uh, you really need to look at, uh, I think, at the entire product during peak, peak dates. Uh, are your uh, cancellation policies more restrictive? Are your high, uh, rates higher? Is your um, um, surcharge between different categories or between different products, is it increasing as well or is it just a statistic a static um 10 euros um because 10 euros on on a, a rate of 250 on the peak day or something is not percentage wise it's not that much anymore as as perhaps it was when your rate was only 100 euros so that you really need to look at at everything from from a, a bigger picture not not only upselling i guess mm -hmm. okay very good, thank you. Uh, and Daniela Hupfeld, um, moving in terms of, of, of I, I guess, boosting demand in, in a more strategically, or strategically per se, how do you feel that you your hotels or hotels in general can can boost their demand on specific dates in a more strategic way? Is that is that uh, something that you consider? And and how, if so, how do you go about that? Uh, first, I always find it tricky to say you boost demand because I live on the philosophy that there is demand out there and the question is how do i get it and not my neighbor so it's more for me like targeting demand in the right direction there might be demand out there that i don't want or don't need um so first it's important that you know what is out there that you know what's going on with your competition what's going on in your market what's going on in your feeder markets and then again as i said earlier it needs to match the hotel's need there might be a lot of demands during certain times of the year that you don't necessarily want or need and the other way around so basically with using uh, something like user guest in that example or um, the general um, online marketing that you do needs to be targeted to the customer that you really want in a certain period of time and that would then probably be boosting your demand out of the existing demand but I think everybody is trying to do that so it's it's very very difficult and the danger i see is that especially when we talk peak seasons um as the booking or the lead times have changed and everything is so last minute and there is still a little bit of the traditional thinking going on at least here in, in southern europe to say um summer holidays are booked in january and these times are long over so you also need to be certain what might be coming your way and you can't give in too early when it comes like to price or when we talk upselling to as daniela said to have the differences between categories too low or something like that so that you need to be certain of and then target accordingly with the tools you choose to target with in order to get the customer into your hotel that is best for your hotel from from a revenue perspective but also from a service perspective because if you create creating too high expectations and the customer is expecting something that no, you might not be able to deliver on the service front that then causes a complete different problem and i think i speak for all of us these problems this summer and also this winter are very apparent because we have all massive problems in giving the services in the proper way that we actually promise. Mm -hmm. All right, Eric, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I think the um, the, other, the other thing to highlight is that uh, if we're, we're thinking about properties in a, in a singular basis, that's what we've been talking about a lot. But if, if we have multiple properties in the same do same destination. Again, the guest doesn't know which property is better than the other one, or they may not even realize that there are multiple properties in the same location. So uh, the hotel knows that. Um, the hotel can, can create that rule in the RMA to say, you know what, during these next two next two weeks, we really should be pushing this particular property because they, they, have, they need a lot more inventory, they need a lot more bookings than the other properties. So. I think the the what we're talking about is is standard cross selling 101. If if anybody was uh, picking up the phone or speaking to the hotel about a booking, the, the first question the hotelier would try and find out is, are your dates flexible? Yeah, you, you're you're interested in travelling, but are your dates flexible? If dates are flexible, then it makes it much easier to recommend this particular property or another property or one weekend versus another weekend. So um, RMA is just automating what happens in a normal sales conversation uh, anyway. 
but when we're doing it in an automated way, we're making the website more of an effective sales tool by getting the guests to, to go into the booking engine with the right kind of incentive, the right kind of benefits uh, notification, then they would they would um, achieve otherwise. Because the, the reality is um, most guests who visit a website don't actually make a booking. If, if they did that, uh, there wouldn't be a problem to solve. But our data shows that only one visitor out of every five is going from the website into the booking engine and, and completing a booking. So we want to, so that one in five, so the, the 80% that's not going into the booking engine, that's the, uh, the data or the, the, the traffic they're look, we're looking to optimize. And um, we're just doing it in a, in a way that would happen normally in a, in a normal voice or, or email conversation about, about a potential stay. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of the practicality that you've just mentioned in terms of the, the, the flexible dates, are there any other practicalities that hotels should consider when they're applying revenue strategies to their website, apart from what you've just mentioned? Are there, is there anything else there? Yeah, I think length of stay. So if you have a, a booking behaviour that typically shows a 1.6 or a 1.8 nights average length of stay, particularly on, on weekend days, like if you have, if you have a guest that's checking out, um, on a Sunday morning, um, are you likely to be selling that room again on a Sunday night? In in, in many cases, um, Sunday nights tend to be the, the quietest night of the week. So you can actually give the guests an incentive to extend their stay, either even if it's not overnight on Sunday night, but a very late checkout, let's say 6 p.m. checkout on a Sunday. Now, many guests would be happy to pay a, a nominal a nominal amount to for that flexibility on a Sunday. But when you, when you have the data that actually shows you where um, the length of stay patterns are for different origins or different types of guests, that's another example of how you can uh, apply this particular strategy. So we're, we're talking about um, dates, we're talking about days of the week, and we're also talking about days of the week of checkout dates. So, and, and again, um, if the guest was to walk up to the front desk to say, we're, we're checking out today, is it possible for a late checkout? And let's say the checkout date is, is Sunday, the, the checkout date of the week is Sunday, and that's when the hotel will negotiate with the guest about either a late checkout. And it's usually going to be to the benefit of the guest because it'll be much lower than a normal um, overnight fee. Okay, great. Thanks Thanks for that. Um, Daniela Buchenden, coming back to you, in terms of the length of stay that's booked on brand.com, is there a way that you can effectively influence that for your own brand, for Ruby Hotels? Is that uh, something that you see as an as a important part? So for Ruby Hotels, our main hotels are city hotels. Um, so we get lots of business travelers throughout the week um, and then the leisure city getaways uh, throughout the weekend. And of course, the, the main thing is trying to combine these two um, guests uh, groups into pleasure um, um, stays. So um, guests really start to combine their business stay with with some leisure and extend their stay. So that's where where we really focus on. Hey, what can you actually do around us? Um, what's going on in the city? Are there any events? Are there any good restaurants? Um, is there there something some additional benefit for for someone who's coming for a meeting or for for a congress to actually explore? Um, london or frankfurt for for a bit longer than um than just this meeting or is it just the meeting and then check out again mm -hmm. um okay. yeah so i guess again um that's where we really need to know our guests and really know, need to know what are they looking for and and focus on the added benefits or that's what they're looking for what they what they find interesting Okay, wonderful. Thank you. And and Daniela Hutfeld, from your perspective with uh, your hotels, is that something similar or do you see it in a different way? I, I have to see it in a different way because I think I'm exactly the opposite. So average length of stay, if that falls below 4.5, we, we have a panic attack. Um, mm -hmm. Despite of us having three uh, city properties as well in Spain, but they also are residences, so they're rather used for leisure stays and not so much for business. So by the end of the day, what we're trying to do, um, and I guess that's what every tour operator also tries to do, is the classical... Um, 
seven for six, uh, 11 for 10 kind of things when it comes to holiday periods. So doing a price advantage and communicate that respectively to say, well, if you're going on holidays for like 10 days, why don't you make it 12? No, depending again on when you start your stay that again, people have to work. People have a certain amount of holiday days during a year. So I don't think if I offer three weeks for two, I'm not getting anywhere because people just simply don't have the time to do that but if you scheduling a checkout on friday and you say well for let's say a supplement of 50 euros you can stay until sunday as an example that is something that we're trying to target you know that that you extend or that you increase your average length of stay because that's from from our perspective as a leisure brand that's what we're looking at and the times where you can do the classical 7 14 21 in my opinion they're long over and that that was what used to be done many years ago in, in our company but from now people arrive any day they stay any number of days and again it comes down to know your guests and in combination from where do they come from obviously if it's local spanish business stays much shorter than if customer comes from the uk for example okay very good thank you all right look we're coming up to the end of our time um but i'd like to just perhaps uh, finish off with one last uh, question to eric and Please, both Daniela's, if you'd like to add to this in any way, feel free. Um, but, but Eric, for you, in terms of hotels applying existing revenue strategies to their direct channels, they can replicate what exists within the RMS, for example, or they can create strategies directly through user guest. Could you talk to us a little bit more about that and, and maybe dive a little deeper into the, the minutiae of that? Yeah, so the RMS is um, obviously creating revenue strategy or helping to support revenue strategy. Uh, one of the outputs are, is um, as a price point, obviously, when the forecast is prepared and then the price is um, optimized. Now, so um, again, the RMA is not going to be taking what the RMS is already producing and, and further discounting it, but it's actually making it available, making it visible to the guests. And I think um, Daniela Hupfeld's example just now was great where we have uh, an average length of stay of four nights, 4.6 nights. The, again, the, the guest doesn't know whether or not their length of stay is optimal for your hotel or not, but they will be looking for a better deal. So when you can when you can offer uh, a, a, a special deal, which is taking in their booking behavior and adding an incentive for, to make it a five night or a six night or a seven night stay, all these little incremental changes make a little, make a little big difference. So I think the, um, the, the the summary is that using the technology, let's say from a, from an RMS, should only make your uh, performance on the website even better when the guest is actually aware of what the benefits are, as opposed to being being only visible in the booking engine, which which we've seen that the data shows that most guests don't even get to the booking engine before they've decided to go somewhere else or maybe go and book on the OTA. Um, and on the OTAs, we know there are plenty of different techniques being used by booking on Expedia to try and get the guests to convert or to, to even book any property, not just your property. So the better you can apply RMA at your website, I think the better will be um, the opportunity for you to um, capitalize and, and profit, profit from that strategy. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and Daniela Hupfeld, closing comments and remarks from you based on what you've just heard? um yeah maybe just just that one uh, coming back especially to the, the destination where i'm working in um hoteliers are often scared of things they have not heard before but it's it's just not anything new you try to did that in the old days with a uh, like mailings and funny things like that so i think what is important um also i guess from eric's perspective is to take that kind of fear away and saying things like that tools like that are normal tools and you should be actually having them and it's it's your benefit it's your brand it's your property rather than than shying away from it so to say and then oh no 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 we don't know what that does and oh god on top of that it might even cost money so therefore I think it's uh, it's important that yeah that it's advertised or explained properly in order to to make sure it, it's getting something regular 
and mm. not something rare, if that makes sense, no? Mm. So we, I've, I find that a lot with our, in, in my environment, that people really, oh, no, we're not sure. Oh, no, 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 that's complicated. Oh, no, no, rather not. And and not really understanding what it does for you. I suppose that's, uh, in Daniela's case, probably a little bit different because it's a cool and trendy new brand, whereas I'm a very traditional and old. So, um, but, but that is, I think, a very important part to talk about it like we do now to make people understand what it really can do for you and that it's much much easier than you might imagine mm -hmm. all right wonderful thank you daniela would you like to add anything and and uh, um comment on for closing yeah i think as a conclusion we've we've discussed now a lot on what is the most important to get direct bookings i think also a starting point for everyone to decide really or to analyze for themselves how much do direct bookings actually bring us? For Ruby, this is a huge importance to create our, our brand, of course, and to have our Ruby fans that are returning and booking through our own website. But for the smaller hotels or the franchise hotels or some other properties, the, the cost for direct bookings can sometimes also add up and uh, do not compare to third party. So I think that is a, a first uh, that we've not re been really talking about here um, because for, for both Daniela and, and me, um, direct bookings are very important, but it's just the fact that it's not the case for, for every single property. Mm -hmm. um, then again, with, with direct bookings, I think it's, it's important to really go back to the two main things. The first thing is how do you get your guests on your um, on your homepage in terms of visibility or advertising, um, etc. And the second part is really know your guests, really have your your CDP in place, really know the the booking pattern of your guests, the user behavior of your guests, so you can anticipate and and offer exactly that or or even you're, if you're already offering it, that you really focus on the benefits that the guest is looking for, that you just repeat it again, and that the guest is ensured that it's booking the right, the right product or the right property with the right um, perfect guest satisfaction score, et cetera. Mm. Um, yeah, so as closing, uh, I think both uh, feasibility and knowing your guests, that's, that's the main importance. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. And thank you all. I think uh, we can all agree it's a constant work in progress and uh, always striving to improve on the process as well. So, uh, and it's, of course, the process is different for every, every different brand, every hotel. So what, what fits for one perhaps doesn't fit for another. So it's a, also about flexibility. But Eric, Daniela and Daniela, thank you all so much. It was great to have you joining us. And um, for you, the audience, thank you. And uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, to next year and wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.